A fractal is not the only ubiquitous natural phenomenon whose essence is its form. Another is the spiral. The logarithmic spiral depicts growth and expansion in the universe. For example, if we look at the branching tendencies of a tree, we see that as time progresses, one spiral expands as the number of branches increases. And another spiral contracts as the circumference of branches decreases. Spirals are reflected in structures as diverse as seashells, pine cones, sunflowers, whirlpools, and hurricanes. And as with fractals, we can see spirals at many different scales, from the growth of an embryo to a galaxy. So how do these spirals connect to socionomics? The idealized depiction of the stock market's progress can be seen as a spiral. Uh, the top of each successive wave of one higher degree serves as a touch point for the exponential expansion. And pretty soon, it begins to look like the pattern of a hurricane or galaxy. Now, what are stock prices? They are humanity's valuation of its own productive capacity. So human progress and regress form one of nature's growth patterns. Fractals and spirals reveal an underlying order within many structures that on the surface seem chaotic. Progress and growth seem to occur naturally by these forms. But there could be an even more intimate connection to nature. In the 13th century, a mathematician named Leonardo Fibonacci discovered an important number sequence. It's a very uh, simple sequence of uh, numbers, starting with the, the number one twice. Each succeeding number in the sequence is the sum of the two preceding ones. So the sequence goes one, one, and two, and three, and five, and so on. And for reasons that are pretty mysterious, uh, this sequence of numbers seems to appear in a wide variety of places in the natural world. R. N. Eliot observed that the fractal he called the wave principle was built according to the Fibonacci sequence of numbers, which is governed by a ratio called the golden mean, or phi. The ratio of any two conjugative numbers in this sequence approaches phi. That is an irrational number, which is approximately 0.618. If you look at the Elliott wave patterns, these patterns involve a certain number of waves called impulse waves and corrective waves. Each type of wave, when broken down into its components, reproduces the Fibonacci sequence as the degrees of subdivision increase. The five waves of progress and three waves of regress is the essential form of markets. If there were no fluctuation, there would be no change. So you need at least three waves to get fluctuation. Therefore, the 5-3 pattern is the most efficient way of achieving both fluctuation and progress. Nature is efficient, and this pattern is no exception. The importance of the Fibonacci sequence in nature, just like the importance of fractals and spirals, is its ability to create a robust and efficient method of growth. Uh, there's a wealth of biological, psychological, and sociological uh, evidence that supports the connection. For example, the Fibonacci sequence is in flower head arrangements. In this example, notice how from stem to tip it subdivides one, two, three, and five. In the human body, we find a Fibonacci branching pattern as well. Five appendages, encompassing legs, arms, and head. Three subdivisions within the arms and legs. Five subdivisions off the hands and feet, and three subdivisions in the fingers and toes. Then we find the Fibonacci ratio in heart muscles, in bronchial tube branching, even in the electrical potential of neurons. And as Roger Penrose pointed out, even in the arrangement of the brain's microtubules. The DNA molecule, the code for life, is made up of two intertwining spirals. We find the 0.618 ratio between the helix's width and cycle length. The Fibonacci ratio may even regulate the way we think.
In the 1950s, psychologist George Kelly tested the judgments people make on a positive-negative scale. He assumed that in value-neutral situations, the average response would be 50-50, but he found that in fact, it's 62-38, consistently weighted towards the positive or optimistic side. Researchers have confirmed his findings in numerous studies. For example, when you ask uh, people to judge how dark a piece of gray paper is, uh, the answers don't produce a bell curve, as you might think. They bulge at the 62% point. Uh, if you ask uh, subjects to sort objects into two piles, or rate acquaintances' character traits, or make choices in situations of uncertainty, you get the same result. This bias extends to collective behavior. Stock market analyst Robert Ray showed in the early 1930s that, on average, bear markets tended to relate to bull markets by the Fibonacci ratio in both time and price. And recent studies show the same tendency in voting patterns. It's easy enough to imagine that, or make claims, well, this Fibonacci sequence and the way that it appears uh, in very many areas of life is just like some kind of number mysticism. Uh, it's, it's equally easy to take the position to say, look, when the same thing keeps occurring in such a wide spectrum of areas, there's, there has to be some underlying reason for it. Uh, I tend to the latter point of view. The robustness, resilience, and efficiency of all these universal forms, spirals, fractals, and Fibonacci relationships, may be connected to collective social mood. Nature prefers the most efficient path. In the case of the wave principle, though, the efficiency is not in the individual's biology, but the efficiency in the progress of the species. The idea that fractal patterns, spirals, and Fibonacci growth all exist in the stock market is certainly remarkable. But then when you consider that the stock market itself is a measure of humanity's productive capacity, and then when you consider that cultural trends ebb and flow with that pattern, I mean, the resulting implications are, are quite grand, really.